him. His name was Mike, and Mike had went to the, was at the church when Brother Webb first took the church up in southwest Virginia, up in the mountains. And Mike had got out of church and got hooked on meth real bad. He had lost all of his teeth and everything. and was just in a bad, bad shape. And uh, had a big old beard hanging down, big ponytail down his back, his, rode his Harley. And Brother Webb said about a half hour in the church one night, the back door opened, and Mike walked in just about a year ago. And he said, he said, I didn't even hardly recognize him. He said, I looked back there at him, and I seen him sitting there. He said, I think that's Mike. And uh, as he sat there, he said, the choir got to singing. You know, we, always think in the, we always think when the loss comes, first thing we got to do is slow down, quiet it down. But the power of God got to moving, and next thing you know, man, there was people shouting and worshiping God, and the presence of God was just filling the house. And uh, he said, all of a sudden, over here, Brother, Brother Webb has three rows of pews. And Brother Webb said, there's a man over here sitting on this pew, one of the few remaining original members of that church. Many of them's passed on and things. But a guy by the name of Brother Childress, and I know him well, just a quiet real meek humble guy probably 70 75 years old he, every service he's there he walks in sits there he stays there till service is over and eases out nice guy just a nice brother and brother Webb said the spirit of God got to move and Tony he said he said that he uh he said man the power of God was moving he said all of a sudden brother Childress just gets up does something never seen him do goes over walks down the center aisle goes straight back here to Mike Stephanie started talking to Mike next thing you know old big Mike jumped up and come down the altar knelt at the altar and prayed clean through the old time salvation hey man after church he stood up and testified he said I went down the road to the charismatic church said I think I'm gonna try to get me some help said I gotta have help Said he wasn't there sitting there about a half hour. He said, man, there ain't nothing happening here. I ain't feeling nothing here. He said, I got to have help. I got to find an old-time church. I got to go somewhere where I can feel God. And he said, I got to think. He said, I know that Brother Webb that used to pastor down there 20 years ago is still there. And I'd say he's still preaching the truth and the power of God's still down there. So he said he pulled up on his motorcycle and pulled up the front door. And that's why he's about a half hour late and he's sitting there. He said, God... He said, there probably ain't even anybody in here that even knows me. Probably nobody even here is even going to recognize me, and all the people I knew is probably gone. He said, and all of a sudden, he's sitting out there, and he said, hey, I know someone still goes here. I've seen him, and that's that old brother Childress. He said, that man still goes here, and he sat outside, and he said these words, Shane. He said, God, if you'll give me another chance, if you would if you would have mercy, if you're going to have mercy to help me, he said, you let that old man, Brother Childress, come back to me and tell me that you'll give me another chance. Uh, hey, man, Brother Webb said 20 years, I've never seen that man get off the pew and go to anybody. He's just a quiet, shy man. Uh, but praise God, in just a few minutes into him being in the doors, uh, praise God, God sent him somebody. You know why? Because he loves the broken ones. Uh, he loves broken hearts. Go over to God. Uh, amen. No, he don't want you to keep your broken heart, uh, but he wants to heal that broken heart. He wants to turn things around. Hallelujah. In a man or a woman's life, if they'll let him. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. I love that, Brother Ryan. I thought about that. Amen. God, if, you, if you're in there, I've been gone for 20 years, but God, if you're still in that church, you still love me. God, you send that man back here to me, Brother Childress, and I'll know that you care. I feel the Lord dealing with somebody right here tonight in this service. Brother Webb said about uh, three or four weeks later, he said, said uh, old Mike walked up to him and handed him a $100 bill. He said, Brother Webb, i got to tell you about this money. He said, what's, what, what's, what is it, Mike? He said, well, you know, he said, I had some debts, some bad debts I needed to pay. He said, I didn't want to pay them. He said, but I knew if I didn't pay them, they'd come kill me. He said, I had to take care of some stuff. So he said he got up and he walked out. Hey, man, don't worry, it's just a cell phone. The Lord's, probably, the Lord's calling Miss Mary back there. Hey, man, she's getting a phone call from Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. So anyhow, we sit, we sit there. We're sitting there. She's talking to him now. Praise God. <laughs> Miss Mary, tell him, come on down here and help me out in this service tonight. <laughs> but we're sitting there. Tim, we, we're sitting there. And he said he, he had that $100 bill. And he said, I, got, I had to go pay a bad debt off. And you can kind of read between the lines and, and know what that is. He, so he, he, he looked at me and said, I went down there to that old drug dealer. and said, well, here's your money. 
He said, that old boy looked at him and said, I done heard about you, Mike. He said, I done heard about you going up there to that church. He said, I'll tell you what. He said, when I see the change in you, what God's done, he said, why don't you just take that $100, take it up there and give it to that preacher. Hallelujah. Are y'all listening to me tonight? Amen. God can turn your life around. God can make a difference. God can make a change. God can do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think. Let's lift our hands one more time. Ask him to have his way in this service tonight. Can you do it right now? Ask the Lord just to bind the hindering spirits. Ask the Lord to give us liberty in this service tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Going to read some very familiar scripture from St. John chapter 4. Oh, my, my heart is just, just, I don't know. Lord, I'd like to help somebody so bad. I'd like to see people get changed. It breaks my heart that I just can't, I can't make people do right. I wish I could. I wish I could tell them how good it is, amen, to serve God. Glad to have you back tonight, those that were missed this morning. Glad to have you. Amen. Ashley, thank you for braving the elements tonight all by yourself. Amen. And don't worry about them kids. I know they don't know a lot about church, but don't let them get you so frustrated you don't get help, all right? Do you come here to get help? I don't want you to leave here and say, man, it ain't worth it. No, it's worth it. You, we're glad you're here. Little boy wiggling. If we ain't got no more victory than that, then we need to hit the altar and pray through. Praise God. We got them worse than that, and they've been raised in church. Mine acts worse than that half the time. Amen. So, amen. Let's get in here and let the Lord help us. When therefore the Lord knew that the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed into Galilee. For Bible readers, this would be very familiar, but for somebody tonight, it would be the first time they hear it. He must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Joseph gave to his son Joseph. Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there, and Jesus therefore being wearied with his journey set thus on the well. And it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who it was that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman said unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou this living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us this well? And drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus saith unto her, Go call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said to him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and whom thou hast now hast is not thy husband. In that saidest thou truly. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me. The hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know that we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. And when he has come, he is, we will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. Father, help me to preach tonight, God, and on our ears to hear, our hearts to receive. God, help me to keep this so simple that somebody can understand it tonight. Help me to say the words that will strike that chord in the heart, God, that will draw men and women to you, Lord. Help me to say, God, I'm, it ain't about Brent Marquis or a hand clap of what a great message, God, but it's, Lord, to draw men and women and to point them to you and to the cross of Calvary. God, give us peace here tonight, God. Calm the, the nerves, Lord. 
and just bring peace in this house. Uh, uh, bind the powers of hell that would hinder and distract God and tear down. Uh, and let the Holy Ghost settle in this place. Uh, let conviction settle in this house tonight. Uh, and God, let men and women sit there in all of your presence, God. Not in all my words, God, but in all of your presence, Lord, is my prayer. And I'll thank you for it now in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Hallelujah. If I could preach for just a little while tonight, a simple title, amen, looking for love in all the wrong places, looking for love in all the wrong places. I'm going to tell you something, friend, this world is looking for love. You hear me? And I, I, y'all ain't listening to me. I said this world is looking for love. Amen. And you understand me tonight that they're mostly are only finding a substitute that is called lust. Amen. I spoke somewhat this morning about the homosexual and the lesbian crowd. Amen. In the Bible, they want to tell you I love him or I love her. But one of the things I didn't point out today, Jesus said they burned in their lust one toward another. Amen. Amen. And what people are saying is love is nothing more than a demonic lust. And could I tell you that lust is never satisfied. Amen. But there are many sincere people out there that are seeking love. They don't realize that, 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 that why, why does it keep falling? falling apart brother Brent why no matter what I do or who I am with or where it doesn't matter I, I really do, I want to make it of this what why because it's all founded in this world is founded on lust uh, if you were here today brother Shane taught a wonderful wonderful lesson and he's just a great teacher but he taught about how the, the way we dress and the way our attire is uh, when women go around with no clothes on they stir that lust up in the heart of the man uh, amen and God taught us from the very beginning Getting, as Brother Shane said, rain, rain right out of the Garden of Eden when they come and they were naked. Uh, amen. The Bible said that he told them. Uh, amen. He made coats for them and clothed them uh, and covered up their nakedness. Uh, amen. This is one of the reasons that we went before the parade yesterday. Uh, and we went down before the parade and passed out flowers. Why? Uh, because Christians have no business at a parade. Why? Uh, why, Brother Brent? Because there's a bunch of girls uh, uh, kicking their legs up and showing their undergarments. Uh, and I don't want my boys out there. Uh, amen. And his brother Shad said it's so, just so perfect. Uh, if you can look at a girl in her underwear uh, and it doesn't stir lust in your heart, you've got a worse problem. You're queer. Uh, amen. You hear me? Uh, I said, you got a worse problem. Uh, amen. At least be, don't lie about it. You'll really worry me. Uh, if it didn't affect you, then I am going to be worried. Uh, amen. You're not getting away either. I'm going to tell you, it stirs the lust and the world. We, we, this world, brother, we are living in in a lust, sin, hey, sin sick world, amen. Yeah. Women have been degraded to nothing more, uh, amen, than an object used to sell something, uh, amen. You can't have an advertisement, uh, amen, for charming toilet paper, uh, amen, without having some half naked woman somewhere, uh, amen. You know why? Because they know, as Brother Saint said, there's a reason today that the pornography industry, uh, amen, is a billions and billions and billions of dollar industry uh, and predominantly controlled by the mafia. Uh, I want to tell you, friend, because this world is driven by love. Lust. Amen. And lust is never satisfied. I said lust will never make you happy. Amen. We go, how do you know? Because Jesus come to a well and he sit down on a well. And a woman come at 12 o'clock. Why? Because the, the, the women that had a bad name and a bad reputation, they always come and they sit on the well. And they come in the middle of the day because they wouldn't come in the morning with all the other women because they were ashamed of their selves and Jesus is sitting on this well and this woman shows up and she is ashamed amen, of her lifestyle she is ashamed of her sin amen. she is ashamed of the way she's done and I'm going to tell you something when you've made a mistake and you've done something you shouldn't have done amen. you need to be ashamed of it amen. now we can't go back and rewind the clock but the reason America's going to hell in a handbasket is because we took away all the reproach and the shame you can live together. You can shack up. Amen. You can have a baby. You can do whatever you want. And there is no, oh, listen to me. Yes, there's a God that forgives. Yes, there is a God that will forgive your sin. Amen. But you must first be sorry for your sin. You cannot continue on. Brother Brent, I can't believe you'd preach to me. I can't help but preach to you because the path you're on is going to lead you to one heartbreak after another because you're living on lust. Amen. You're chasing.
place in one feeling after another uh, and it will never end. Uh, it will never be satisfied. Uh, you need to come to Jesus tonight uh, and find out what true love uh, really means. Uh, you're chasing uh, things that you're never going to catch. Uh, oh, there's such an emptiness. Uh, oh, you're miserable tonight. Uh, why? Uh, because you're looking for love uh, in all the wrong places. Amen. Oh, God, oh, God, oh, God. Whew. Amen. Are you listening to me? Are you hearing me tonight? Amen. Lust is never satisfied. Amen. And when Jesus come to a well and he sat down, he said, ma'am, would you give me something to drink? It took her by surprise. Men didn't normally speak to her. Hey man, she was a, she was a, a reproach and a disgrace on the neighborhood, brother Tony. She was the outcast. Uh, she was the one that the gossip sessions talked about. She's oh yeah, you know what she's done. Uh, we know what she's been. Come on here now, and you know what I'm gonna tell you something a little bit about that. Uh, there's a lot of people like to run their mouth. Uh, they're just as guilty as a whole lot of other people. They just ain't never been caught. Uh, are you listening to me? Uh, hey man, some people's sin can be seen. Uh, hey man, and everybody says, oh we can see we can see where they've been and what they've done. Uh, Hey man, but Stephanie, there's a whole lot of them over hiding in the shadows. Hey man, with a self-righteous attitude, and they just never got caught. They just never got exposed. Are you listening to me tonight? Hey man, I want to tell you, Jesus said, "Give me, sir." Hey, how I, I can't believe you speak to me. Hey man, I'm a Samaritan. You're a Jew. We don't talk to each other. Hey man, oh listen, woman. If you knew who was talking to you, oh glory. If you knew who I was, you'd be talking to me, saying, "Give me something to drink." Whoa. Come on now. Hey man, this woman sitting there, she said, You can't give me nothing to drink. You don't have no, you don't even have a bucket. You ain't got a rope. This well's deep. Hey man, he said, Woman, I've got water. If I give it to you, you'll never thirst again. It ain't it don't come out this way. Listen, oh great Lord. I want to tell you. Hey man, he said, I've got something that'll cure what ails you. I've got something that's better than the most potent mixture ever been mixed up by a pharmacist. I got something that'll cure what ails you. Uh, amen. You've been looking for love in all the wrong places, uh, but you just come face to face uh, with true love uh, because greater love had no man than this, uh, than man that laid down their life for his friends. Uh, I want to tell you there's only one that's died for you. Uh, there's only one that's hung on a cross for you. Uh, there's only one that shed his blood for you, uh, and that's Jesus Christ. Uh, and there's only one that can lay claim uh, that I love you with all my heart. Uh, why? Because he has proven his love. Uh, I said he has proven his love to tonight. Uh, amen. He is. Uh, amen. The Savior of the world. Uh, lift your hands and praise him. Oh, God. Oh, God. I love Brother Ryan. People just want to be loved. People here tonight just looking, Brother Tony, for real love. The one that should have taught them about love broke their trust, destroyed their confidence, wrecked their lives. The protecting hand of the Father become the perverted hand of the Father. Huh? The loving hand of the Father became the lust-filled hand of the Father. Come on here now. Hey man, the old kind uncle turned out to be the old perverted uncle. Oh God. Hey man, it's everywhere, Brother Tony. It's everywhere you go. Hey man, when I look at these people, and I, I could point my finger at them, and not everybody's had that that's in trouble has had problems, but so many of them. You can trace it back every time, Brother Shane. Uh, hey man, how come you're in your second, and third marriage? How come you're divorced? And how come you've been divorced here or there? And they'll all tell you the same thing. I, I married some man, uh, only found out he was cheating on me while we was dating, cheated on me the whole time we was married. Uh, hey man, or I married some old gal. Uh, she was in the. Oh, come on here now. Uh, hey man, or you find somebody. 
that doesn't know how to be faithful because the one that should have taught them about love, amen, betrayed their trust. Amen. And oh, when I think about it, amen, I can stand here before you, Brother Tony, and I can puff out my chest, and I can wipe my eyes, and I can have not one tear in my eye and say, well, I ain't worried about that. I've never been there. You know why, Brother Ryan? I was raised in a home of love. Amen. I never did see my dad hit my mom. I know my dad was faithful to her and been faithful to her for almost 40 years. Amen. Come on, help me preach now. Amen. I know that he never touched my little sister. Amen. Ow! I know what true life I've seen. I was raised in the house of God. Amen. But before I get up here and stick my chest out and talk about all I've done, I realize tonight that in this house there are people. Amen. I can condemn them. I can look down on them. But I'm not looking down on you tonight. I'm trying to lift you up out of that hole. Brother Brett, are you looking down on me because of my sin? No. I'm looking to you and telling you there's somebody that can really teach you about love. Amen. Oh, great God. Everybody around you may have broke your heart. Everybody around you may have broke your life. Amen. But Jesus is sitting on the well tonight. I said, Jesus is a sitting on the well tonight. And he says, come unto me. All you that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Amen. I've got real love. I've got real love to show you. Amen. Looking for love in all the wrong places. Oh, God. Years ago, <coughs> years ago, my dad and his cousin went to Virginia Beach one night. He told me. And they was going to preach on Sunday morning. And Sister Swope, they rolled in there at about 10 o'clock, uh, about 2 o'clock in the morning, on Saturday night, Sunday morning. He said it might as well have been noonday. He said the streets were packed. People were moving, running up and down the streets, middle of the night. Hey, man, there was a guy out on the corner, Brother Ryan. He said strumming a guitar. Hey, he was trying to get a crowd up and get some people to come, and he wanted to preach to them. So he said, uh, he said he uh, got to, he said his cousin went over there who was doing the preaching. He asked that guy, I said, can I say a few words? Brother Shane, dad said, uh, his old cousin got up there who's backslid now, sad to say, he don't think he's backslid, but he is. He grabbed that microphone under the anointing, and dad said, I heard him say, hey! He said, y'all here, y'all want to hear about love? Man, they started, yeah, screaming and crying out. He said, I'm going to tell you about real love. And Brother Shane, my dad said, was in a matter of five minutes. He shut down that entire block. He said, they jammed that block. They come running from every direction as the power God pulled out to them. Hey, Amen. As my cousin got up here, he said, I'm going to tell you about real love. He said, you're up here and you're on a lust crazed binge. Hey, Amen. Running around, laying on the beaches with no clothes on, fornicating on every side. He said, but I'm going to tell you about real love. Hey, Amen. He, he said, they come a running. They shut the whole street down until the policeman had to break through and made him quit because it shut the whole street down. What was it? When they heard somebody tell them that they there is really love, oh great Lord and God. Oh, hallelujah. I got my Savior. I'm going to tell you there is a real trust. There is someone that won't lie to you. Amen. I said there is somebody that means what he says. It says what he means. I feel like some of you here say, Brother Brett, every woman ever talked to lied to me. You may say every man he ever told me lied. Yeah. But I want to tell you about one, amen, whose words are forever settled in heaven. Amen. I want to tell you about one that meant every word he said. And when he said, I love you. He meant every word he said. He loved you all the way to the cross. He struck out his hands and said, drive the nails in. I will prove my love. I will prove my love, great God. He may I come to tell you, you've been looking in all the wrong places. But you keep coming to this altar. You come down here and talk to the man who can. You come down here and talk to the Savior tonight and he will turn your life around. Yeah. Years ago, Brother Tony, there was a tragic fire. He man, a house burnt down, and a little boy stuck his head out the top window to Tim, and he began to cry. Whole crowd of people standing there watching. But this old house had them old copper downspouts. Y'all ever seen them old copper downspouts real thick? All of a sudden, a man broke out of the crowd, grabbed that copper downspout, climbed up there, put that boy on his back, and went back down that copper downspout. You could hear his flesh singeing on that copper.
You could smell the burning skin. Hey Amen. A month or two later, as the little boy's parents had tragically died in that fire, they went to court for custody of the little boy. As one by one they stood in line, Brother Tony, one parent would step up and say, I tell you what, I got a big eight bedroom house. I got about 100000 in the bank. I'll send him to college. I'll do this or that, all right? Next one would step up, sir. What could you offer this child? Uh, hey, amen. Well, I tell you what I can do. I got a business. Uh, I don't have any children. If he'll do good, I'll give him my business. Well, I'll do this. I'll do that. We'll love him. Another one stood up and said, We got four kids. And he'd been, and one by one, and all of a sudden, a little old man in bib overalls stepped up out of the crowd. Uh, and Brother Tony, that judge, looked at him and said, Now, sir, what can you give? Uh, he said, Sir, I can't give uh, even half of what they've offered. Uh, he said, I can feed him and I can clothe him. Uh, I'll give him a bed to sleep in and I'll send him to school. I don't have no money and I'm a blue collar worker. Well sir why in the world would you think you get this child and he turned his hands around hey man with the scars and he said because I deserve because when all these stood in the crowd I stepped out and proved hold on my son died and he said I want you to know that I deserve him because I took the scrap off the Holy Ghost tonight. Hey man I'll tell you something. Hey man somebody may talk or talk but there's only one that can walk a walk. There's only one that's got nail prints in his hands. There's only one that's got nail prints in his feet. And that's Jesus Christ. Amen. He's here to say, I want your soul. I want you to give your life to me. I want to show you, great God. Well, why should I trust you? Amen. Why should I risk my heart again? I tell you why. Because he wore the nails. I said, he's got the scars. He's got the marks that proves that he loves you. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah. Why should I trust you, preacher? I don't want my heart to be broken again. I tell you, don't trust me. Trust him. He's got the marks that proves he loves you. Brother Shane, I can't prove it, and we can't. You can't disprove it. But somebody said the only thing in heaven that's man-made is the scars in his hands and feet. Oh, glory! I don't know if they're gone, but I don't think they are. I think you can still see them, Brother Lee. Can I ask you a question, Brother Lee? You've had your heart broken before, ain't you? Huh? Brother Lee, can I tell just a little bit? Would you be all right, Fat? You should forgive me. I don't, I don't tell too much. Brother Lee was a truck driver. When he'd walk out the front door, his best friend would walk in the back door. The man he ate breakfast with, I don't even know him. You don't know him. I won't call his name, so we're not embarrassing him or Brother Lee. But he'd walk out the front door to go work, sending his whole paycheck home, just kept enough to pay his gas. And besides all that, when it was all said and done, not only did she break his heart, she took everything he had. He owned his own truck, had to sell his truck. Brother Lee, I'll tell you, he wasn't a Christian, but he didn't do that kind of stuff, right? He was faithful to his wife. Huh? She took it all. Within a few months, he lost everything he had, and she took every bit of it and blowed it on drugs and alcohol. Every last bit of it. He was left with nothing. She had nothing. That's a heartbreaker, ain't it? But Brother Lee, could I ask you a question? Did you find true love at this little church when you knelt at the altar? Woo! i tell you what else you found. I want to throw this in there. You found a whole new family of brothers and sisters that love you. Hey, man, not for what you got. But they just love you because you're one of us. Oh, hallelujah. And I love you, Brother Lee, but my love don't compare to the love of the Savior. Hallelujah. I'm a preacher tonight on looking for love in all the wrong places. Brother Tim, have you felt that love tonight? Whoo! Hey, man, Sister Pam, have you felt that love? You've had your heart broken, but there's one, hallelujah, that loves you unconditionally. He won't break your heart. He won't break your trust. He's the real Deal, hallelujah. Thank God I got to quit. She sat on the well. She sat on the well. Sir, where'd you come from? 
Who are you? What are you doing? Amen, woman, I come here for you. I must needs go. I felt like the Lord laid this upon my heart. What I'm fixing to tell you. Now listen closely. Listen, listen, listen. Brother Tony, when it got down to his, woman, go call your husband. Sir, I've had five husbands and the one I'm with is not my own. I'm here to tell you, friend, what you, don't, what you need is not another husband or a wife. And you mark it down. If you want to write it on paper, I'll sign it for you before you leave his service. You're just going to go through another divorce. You're going to go through more heartbreak and pile it all up because you are still looking for love in all the wrong places. Oh, Brother Ben, I just can't make it without a girlfriend or a boy. Yes, you can. Brother Ben, I just can't do it. I... Yes, you can. But you've got to come down to this altar and surrender your life to him completely. Well, I've been to the, no, I say completely. And the reason that you're still running and still looking and still dri being driven by not love but lust. And the reason for that is, is you have not surrendered to God. My brother, but I want love. Don't lie about it. Just admit it. You're still full of lust. You've never prayed through over at the altar. Now you hear me tonight. Another husband, woman, is not what you need, he said. You've had five. And the one you're with belongs to somebody else. She sits back. How does this man know this? You're here tonight. Brother Brent, how do you know that? What are you preaching to me? What are you doing? Because Jesus knows everything about you. The very hairs of your head are all numbered. No, Ashley, you didn't just happen to stumble into this church. God directed your past to come to this church. And though you don't know much of nothing, hey amen, you can't argue with what you have felt. At this altar, am I right? And I want to tell you, Jesus knows everything about you, what's happened to you, where you've been and what you've done. And he loves you tonight. Glory to God. Michelle, you may have stopped in here tonight and said, Brother Brent, I just come because somebody invited me. No, you and Darlene are sitting there tonight. And the divine providence of God sent you here to tell you he can teach you about real love tonight. Oh, could I preach for a little while? Brother Tony, he said, I must needs go through. This was no accidental in encounter at a well. It was a divine hand of God. Stephanie, you didn't just happen to stumble into Haven of Hope Tabernacle. The divine intervention of God when you felt like you wanted to stop, but you didn't know how to stop. And God seen it down inside that if you could just get to an altar that you wanted to do better. And you're here tonight. And you're beginning to really know what true love is when Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. You know what I like? He not only teaches us, Brother Tim, what true love is, he teaches us how to give true love. Oh, hallelujah. Have I preached too long tonight? i got to quit. But, but here's, here's where the Lord brought me to. Now, y'all listen. Y'all listen to me closely. So the last thing that she says, brother, is she says, I want to talk to you about religion. Sir, you're a Jew, and y'all worship in Jerusalem. You say that Jerusalem is the holy city. But we say right here in this mountain is the holy city. And some of you are sitting here now, Brother Brent, now, this, this was a Pentecostal church, and I'm a Baptist. Or, Brother Brent, this is a Holy Roller church, and, and I'm a Mormon. Or, Brother Brent, this is a Holy Roller church, and, and I'm a Catholic. And Jesus looked at her and said, Woman, you don't know what you are. Did he say that? Well, let me read it to you. You worship, you know not what. You're just saying that because that's what everybody's always told you. Yeah. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I felt God prick my heart to, to tell somebody. But Brother Brent, when I was a kid, I got baptized as a Catholic. You don't know nothing about being a Catholic. Or Brother Brent, when I was a kid, I, I, I was a, 
Let me explain something to you. I brought it all to this. He said, sis, it's not that mountain. It's, it's not Jerusalem. It's not here in Samaria. It's in here. He said, the Father seeketh such to worship Him in spirit and in truth. And I come to tell you, I'm not here to bash the Catholics or the Methodists or the Baptists and to tell you, that's God, it's Pentecost. It's that Bible right there. And that's all it is. And when it comes down to the end of that, and we could talk about false religions, we could, I could argue with you about what some of these religions are teaching that's not in that Bible. But that's not the point tonight. What you need is not a religious argument. Woman, you're just saying that. You don't know where to worship you. You don't know. You're just a confused mess. What you need tonight is Jesus. And I come to tell you, I'm not here to sign up people. I'm not here to find out if you can become a member. We don't even have members yet. I come to tell you this, that what you need is Jesus Christ and his love and his forgiveness and to turn your life completely over to him. Stand to your feet tonight. Hallelujah. We are Pentecostal. We are holy rollers. I'm not ashamed of that. But what we are first before we're anything is Christians. We believe what this Bible teaches. We are Christ like. That is our goal. But Brother Brent, I don't know about all this. I don't know. My daddy, my, I didn't ask you about your daddy, your mama, your history. I didn't ask you none of that. I come to tell you, you're looking for love in all the wrong places. You're here tonight, and if I could get you to confess and break down, you are miserable and empty inside. I'm going to tell someone that comes to this church on a regular basis, if it's so right, how come you're still so miserable? If you finally found what you're looking for, how come you're so empty inside? I've prayed and asked God how to deal with situations. And I've not got the green light on anything yet. But I'm going to speak to somebody under the authority of the Holy Ghost. You are not happy where you are. You know when you was happy? When you first knelt at this altar. And you surrendered to God. And you was willing to go to Africa for Him. If that's what He wanted. And now you're saying this, that, the other. Oh, you know better. You know better than to come here and think you're going to get tiptoed around. You know better than that, this church. You're not happy tonight. I love you. I've begged God. You say you're lying. I beg God with tears. Help me somehow, God, to say it and help them and keep them and love them because I don't want to lose nobody. Not for the numbers, but because I love you and you're my friends. You're not happy tonight. Why? Lust is never satisfied. <laughs> God is a spirit. He's telling her, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. You must love the truth. I know that a Messiah is coming. Woman. I that speak unto thee and me, you're looking into the eyes of the Messiah. She left her water pot, went her way into the city. Say it to the men. Come see a man which told me all things that ever did. Is not this the Christ? Then they went out of the city and came unto him. Verse 39 said, And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of the woman which testified, He told me all that ever I did. Verse 41, And many more believed because of his own world. And said unto the woman, Now we believe not because of thy saying. We have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ, the Savior of the world. You need to find him for yourself tonight. Brother Brent, I looked around. I heard the testimonies. I heard you point out some. Man, what you need tonight is get your own testimony to where you can stand and say, I found it. 
for myself, preacher. It's true. It's true. It's true. Glory to God. Heavenly Father, I've done my best tonight. I felt you prick my heart to preach about a woman at the well. You didn't give me all the details. You just led me to this verse, and I tried to obey you. Now, God, I humbly ask you to help this altar call. I asked you earlier, God, to stop the hindrances. I asked you earlier, God, to send your presence and let men be in all of your presence, not my words. And I pray that this is happening, God, for I am and can do nothing. Bring us to an altar tonight, Lord, I pray. Complete the work in this service. In Jesus' name, with every head bowed and every eye closed. I feel like asking one person right now. Brother Brown, I don't understand all about the religion. I don't understand all about the Bible. I would, we don't talked about that. You're here. Brother Brent, you preached to me. I spent my whole life chasing love. I spent my whole life looking for things. And Brother Brent, I began to find out about someone who really loves me. And I'm going to give him my all. I'm going to put my trust in him. And he's going to help me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, love of God. Every head still bowed. Sing it softly. How rich, how pure. The love of God. How measureless. And strong. It shall forever more endure. Oh, Jesus. I wish these two little blonde-headed girls could learn right now about true love before sin wrecks their lives. Oh, Brother Tony, this is what we're here for. I wonder tonight if there's one young lady, one man, one boy, one girl. Say, Brother Brent, you preached to me tonight. Step out of your seat. Come down here and meet me at this altar. Hallelujah. Thank God for one. I didn't ask you to figure it all out in your mind. I didn't ask you. I said, Brother Brent, you see, Brother Brent, I want to learn about true love. I want to learn how to love. I've been used and abused by sin. And tonight I want to find out about love. Is there one more that wants to step out? I feel the love of God in my heart right now. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. If I could have two sisters right now to step out and pray with Ashley. I'm fixing the clothes. You want to come? You want to learn about real love? You want to come tonight and feel his presence, his power, and his provision? I'm going to tell you just a moment. Keep your heart and your mind on him. Every head, please still bow. Come on, you need to step out. I'm telling you what I know. You feel it. Pull. You're doing the best you can to hold it back. Say, this ain't real. I'm not feeling what I'm feeling. But yes, you are feeling that. Yes, you are feeling your heart pounding. Yes, the tears are on the corner of your eyes. Yes, you know I preach to you tonight. And I'm trying to save you a lifetime of heartache. Sister Kara, I don't mean to stop you. But I want you to hit the key of A. I'm trying to follow the Lord here. Y'all praying for me, church? No one can touch you like Jesus can. No one can give you peace 
you cannot understand no one can bind the wounds with nail scarred hands no one can touch you keep your heads bowed saints God's dealing please life doesn't kiss away the pain all the hurt you can't explain this world has left you lonely but he'll take you underneath his wings and restore your broken dreams he'll love you like no i need to pray in church right now somebody step out no one can touch you like my Jesus can. No one can give you peace. I got a spot for you right here. I got a spot for you right here, sir. No one can bind your wounds with nail scarred hands. No one can touch you like. I'm going to sing it one more time right now. One more opportunity. Man, I know God's touching you. I'm not trying to drag this thing out, but I can feel his love. I can feel your heart pumping inside your chest right now. Preacher, I'm scared. Preacher, I don't know. Come on, give Jesus a chance. If you come down to this altar and it doesn't work, hey, what if you ain't, you please try. Come on, try. Come to this altar. Come on right now. Give him a chance in this service tonight, would you please? Hallelujah. All right, church. I invite you to come. If you're here and you say, Brother I was scared to come by myself. Just step out with the crowd. Come on down to this altar. Let him touch you right now tonight. Hallelujah. Come on right now. Oh, life doesn't kiss away the pain. All the hurt you can't explain The world has left you lonely But he'll take you underneath his wings And restore 